Hey everyone, thanks for coming and joining me today. As you know, fall is upon us, and that means people are going to be getting ready for the holidays. So I have compiled several lists. Today's list is a top gift guide for tabletop crafters. <laughs> those who make tabletop terrain, and those who maybe run their own Dungeons & Dragons game, those who like to build model scenery, that sort of thing. This is especially geared towards those who are not crafters themselves, but are buying for someone who's a big crafter. Additionally, if you are a crafter, feel free to just send this video over to your significant whatever and tell them to just grab anything that you see on there. Okay, so we're going to hop over here and the first thing is actually the cheapest thing on here and that is the uh, Terrain Crate uh, Dragon's Horde. Now it's called something else here, but and I don't know why it's only $4.49. This is a great price. I will show pictures or footage of the one that I got that I actually painted up. These are a great little accessory to add to any game. These uh, painted up really well when I had them. I used regular craft paint. I didn't even prime them. Uh, they turned out super awesome. Uh, maybe I did prime them. It, it makes your life much easier instead of having to craft something like this, especially if you don't have a 3D printer. The next thing on our list is uh, XPS foam. That's what this is called. This is foam that you actually use like in houses and contracting to insulate walls, but people pick it up specifically for terrain and dioramas and things like that. So uh, I actually don't necessarily encourage you get this from Amazon. This, I'm just using this as an example. You can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's. They come in really big sheets um, and they're really easy to cut down. Um, one of the easiest way to cut them down is getting a razor blade. Now you can get a razor blade from just about obviously anywhere um but this is a ulfa brand ulfa Ol ulfa brand razor blade these knives i've actually used personally and they are sturdy they are very chunky uh they come with this japanese steel which is nothing to sneeze at it is very good replacement blades are about a dollar each um, and this locking mechanism right here works very, very well. Uh, I will say the worst thing about using a razor blade in crafting is when you have the blade sliding in and out, and that's like the worst thing ever. Uh, so that would be a great stocking stuffer to anybody who crafts. A lot of these things are kind of geared towards um, what are the things I'm too cheap to buy myself uh, for myself. Uh, something like this, you know, uh, the crafter in your life might be using cheap dollar store razor blades. Get them something safe, something that's going to last, and something that works really well. That's going to be a great thing. The next thing is a magnifying headband. They come with a variety of lenses that uh, magnify to certain degrees. They have a light on the top so you can, you know, you'll look just like this lovely lady here with this photoshopped onto her head. Um, I have seen these in use before so you get these things it comes with all these different um lenses so depending on how tiny you're working for people who are painting minis and things like that these things are fantastic um and at 16 dollars, you can't beat that uh, i've heard nothing but good things about these um scenery accessories so what's great about something like this these trees uh, you have all different kinds, and they come in all different sizes. One thing that drives me nuts when I see people doing terrain is that they don't use trees of different sizes. They pick one size and try to stick to it, like all trees are the same size. Uh, something like this can really breathe a lot of great... Li like, look at that board. That looks great. Just having some trees on hand would be a huge help to anybody who's making terrain or scenery or anything like that. It's just a... It's like sprinkles on a cake. It just makes it that much better. Not necessarily needed but it makes it really nice. Our next thing is along the same lines. It's actually uh, little tufts of grass, tuft, tufts, grass tufts. You can get and um, paint to the bases of your minis or put in your tabletop scenery, things like that. Um, so as you can see right here, we got a artillery squad with all sorts of different little things right there. And um, not to be confused with like this stuff up here, it's like this stuff down here by their feet. It, brings just a, a good pop of life into the scene that they're trying to recreate. Now, what's nice is that uh, through this one thing, like, look at that, that looks great. Uh, you can get different varieties. Here you go, you can do dry brush, you can do dark stuff, you can do bushes and things like that. Like, that looks really cool. Again, something that I wouldn't necessarily buy myself. Up next, we have what is called a static grass applicator. Okay, now, I know you're, you're seeing that $134 and you're like, Jesse, why are you even? No. 
Um, you're like, I only know what that is. So this is what a gr static grass applicator is. You put the varying green grasses that you see in there in that little cup, and then you shake it out while the battery is going. And what it does, it makes all the little grass stand on end to stand up like grass would, as opposed to just being in like a heap like you see it there in the picture. You put the glue on the left down on the board or the piece that you're trying to glue, and that'll keep the grass there. It, you then erect it up with the static cling, and then you spray it with the aerosol there, and that helps you get these um, great fielded scenics and things like that. So if it kind of falls through that mesh. Now, again, this is one of those things that, especially if I'm still an amateur, I wouldn't get myself. Like, I still don't have one of these. Uh, if you're buying this for something else, chances are they haven't bought it for themselves yet. Um, and the only reason why I recommend this one is because it's a complete set. Uh, it comes with flock, which is the grass. It comes with the glue, and it comes with the uh, layering spray. So even if you were to just get the applicator, which, you know, you can get one for half that price, you still have to get all that other stuff in order to make it a complete process. So that's why I would recommend doing this one. It's got great reviews. I've watched videos online about it. This is a good one. Um, not the best one, because with these things, you definitely get what you pay for. So, I mean, if you get a $15 static grass applicator, you're going to get what you pay for. This is a good medium high-end applicator, and it's going to give you everything you need. Uh, so this is a great big present, as a, you know we call in my family. Okay, up next we have, uh, I actually have two hot glue guns. The first one is from Surebonder, and the reason why I'm picking this one, this isn't even the best one that they have, but I'm picking it because it's cordless. Chances are, if you're like me, you're still using your dollar store glue gun. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit better. It has a nice little uh, fine tip on it. And even though it's not one of the fancy ones that has like the automatic shut off, it's cordless. And just when you're dealing with really small things on a table, a cord can be as damaging as a tidal wave. Like you sweep your cord across something with like glitter or some of that static grass. It's just going to like wreck everything like it's such a pain so to have something that's cordless that you can set aside is going to be huge so i really encourage that you uh, consider maybe getting something like this the next one is very similar uh in that it is a usb powered one you just plug it in you charge it now this one in two different spots claims that it can run for up to a hundred minutes and in other place it says it can run up to 40 minutes regardless that's pretty good it's got an automatic shut off um, cordless design, warms up really quick, and it's efficient. Now, one thing I do not know is how hot it gets. Now, some hot glue guns can get really hot, uh, like you can use them for contracting. So uh, I, this is like a happy medium. Uh, it's got a lot of good ratings. I think it would be a great buy and a great stocking stuffer for anybody. Following up on that is a similar thing, uh, miniature heat guns. Heat guns are gonna be great for drying glue that doesn't dry quickly. Uh, it's going to be good for drying paint and other adhesives and things like that. It's also going to be good for stripping things if you have to. Now, I've got this one here, which gets up to uh, 300 degrees on low and 410 degrees on high. Now, uh, this is great. It's only $12, and uh, I think it comes with, like, shrink wrap and everything. Um, so temperature adjustment, switch, wind down power. This one's a little more basic on the basic side, but just like the hot glue gun thing, if you can get one of these that you can hold in your hand as opposed to a heat gun, which is, you know, huge, that's going to be a great big deal, and that's a great time saver. Now, if you want to swing the extra money, I would recommend getting the Batavia one. This one comes with this little tip here that you can put on to narrow down the heat. And basically, this one can get up to 850 degrees. That's hot. Uh... Now, whether you're going to need that or not, I don't know. But the low setting is 480, which is just a little bit higher than the high setting on the other one. And so uh, if you got, say, a man in your life who's handy, this would be great just to have around the house. Because uh, every once in a while, you got to be able to just melt stuff. Um, so, yeah, stuff like this. Uh, a heat gun is good for getting the bubbles out of resin when you're waiting for it to set for water effects and things like that. So something like this would also be a great stocking stuffer. Now, if you wanna start getting into big items, I recommend the Proxon Hot Wire Cutter. Now, these are notorious. These are much beloved by crafters everywhere and they work great. Now, 
uh, depending on which one you get, I actually ended up getting the Hercules. I got it in 2020. Um, I got the Hercules hot wire cutter. It is the exact same thing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's, you know, basically part for, it's like a carbon copy. Uh, however, the one I got, uh, and it has a couple of different, um, options. You can get a battery for it if you want. I opted not to do the cordless system. I just went with the corded system, but it comes with a foot pedal like you would have on a sewing machine. So you can turn it on, but it won't activate until you hit the foot pedal, which is uh, really, really nice, especially if you've got kids in the house that, uh, you know, if you want to walk away from this for a second, um, little ones aren't going to hurt themselves on the wire because you left it on and whatever. Um, these things if you don't know what it is, you use this to cut foam. Sorry, I probably should have said that. You use this to cut foam. The wire heats up when you activate it and it gets hot enough to cut through foam and you're able to make all sorts of great designs and things like that uh, and also carve out chunks of foam and that sort of thing. When it's activated, the wire heats up very quickly. When you turn it off, it cools off very quickly. So it's not like a iron or something that's gonna stay hot for five, 10 minutes after that. So this is actually very household friendly. Okay, so if you've got a tabletop crafter who's into Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer or something like that, these next things are going to be pretty nice for you, I think. So take a look up here. We've got a couple of minis. And kind of just like the tabletop terrain, I think these would be great. Look at this horrible thing. This looks awful, and I love it. This is some giant naked mole rat beast. This is for a game called uh, Kings of War. This is a big boss monster type thing. Something like this would be great to be able to um, assemble and paint up. Look, it's 20 bucks, and I believe this one is 9 inches tall. Um, last but not least, I have something similar. It is this one here. Look at that thing. That is awesome. This is called an Abyssal Cronius. Um, I don't know what that is. But this looks like a great Dungeons & Dragons campaign big bad. Um, looks really good. Consider getting like a centerpiece mini for that special someone in your life. Something that uh, they can assemble or something that they can paint up themselves that is going to look great. Something that they can scare their players with on the battlefield. That would mean a lot, knowing that they are killing all of their friends with a monster that you got for them. That would mean a lot to them. And that's it. That's all we got for today. I hope you enjoyed the list. If there's anything missing from the list, tell me what you think should be on there. And if you want more content like this, typically I do terrain stuff, but I also do tips and tricks for dungeon masters, tools, and accessories. If that's something you might be interested in, subscribe and hit the bell, and I will leave links to everything down below, and I will catch you on the next list. This is the